Hey guys, this is Taryn at the Girls Inc. Studio in Las Vegas, and I am here with another tutorial. Today, I am going to be talking about the Musotoku Power Box. Say that with me again. Musotoku. Musotoku Power Box. My friend Chris Sanford, owner of the Rook Machine, introduced me to the Musotoku about six months ago. And I've been using it ever since with all my machines. And I absolutely love it. Um, I love all the features that come with it. And I love how cool and unique <laughs> that it looks. And it sure is super cool and unique looking. So let's go look at all the different features and why I love this power box so much. All right, let's get that looking good. So this is the Musotoku power box and it comes in pink and black. Uh, the black one was launched in the body tattoo industry quite some time ago and it quickly became super popular and regarded as one of the best power boxes in the tattoo industry. It's actually regarded as like the Cadillac of power boxes. And that's because the output on these power boxes have been so highly filtered to run your machines smoother than ever before. So really high end, well built power boxes. They are small and really lightweight. I know in the, um, some of the marketing pitches that I've seen, uh, they look really big and bulky like they'd be heavy, but they're not. They're really uh, small and really lightweight. They're probably about, what, four inches long, maybe three inches wide. And this is the Rook machine right here, so you can see how big it is uh, up alongside the Rook. So small and lightweight. Um, with both machines, with purchase, you get this really cool, rugged uh, traveling case, which I thought was fantastic. Um, you know, I travel a lot and it was always really hard for me to find a really rugged box that was the size of my power box, nothing like too big. And with the Muso Toku, um, he includes this in the price of each box. So it fits right in there really nice. It's padded on both the top and the bottom, uh, close it box, and it secures down on both sides and two in the front. So that to me is absolutely fantastic. And I love that they did that, that they included this box in the price of um, the Muso Toku. So pink and black. They, this is pretty new and they just launched it in the permanent makeup industry and Girls Inc. We were the first ones to get them and I do believe we were the only ones to get them on this first run. So um, another cool feature on both boxes is this really cool uh, cording back there, this elastic cording. Um, yeah, it looks really cool and makes the power box stand out, right? But there is um, a reason for them doing this. What this is for is for tucking your cords if you want to do that. So you would just take your power cord and thread it underneath the uh, cording all the way around and then plug your machine in and imagine that is under the cording and it just keeps your cord nice and tight um, to the power box and uh, keeps your cord uh, more organized. And some people really like that. And if you don't use it, well, it just looks really super cool. Another feature to both power boxes is um, under the box on both of them, you are going to find this little threading unit right here. And this is universal threading that takes most camera mounts. It even takes the GoPro mounts and clamps. So you have a lot of options if you want to mount, clamp, or uh, display your power boxes in a stand-like you know, manner. Of course, you can just 
keep them flat like that. They're heavy enough that they, they don't slide and move too easily. But if you're like me, you like to like prop them up and uh, have them on a nice stand. And so that makes it really easy and gives us lots of options. Again, GoPro and most camera mounts and clamps because it's universal threading. So that was really good that they did that. Now, with the pink power box in the purchase and the price, you do get this little stand, this little mini stand here. And you can see it's got a little, little threading right there right there and that just uh, goes right into the back of the machine let's see if I can do this oh yeah perfect it's gonna work there you go and so you just screw it right onto there in the universal threading and you have a little uh, stand and so you can set it up and display it that way so it works really really good um, Unfortunately, let's take this back out. Unfortunately, you know, what a bummer, but you don't get that with the pink box, uh, with the black box. It only comes and is included with the pink box. But like I said, that allows you to have lots of choices with, you know, anything GoPro or most cam camera mounts and clamps. Um, something that really sets these two machines apart is these outputs right here on the face of the uh, machine, on the front panel of the machine. On the black power box, well, you can see it has three outputs, one for power, one for machine, one for foot pedal, and they're clearly marked, okay? On the pink one, you can see it has four. So one for power, one for machine, which takes the RCA cord, so all the machines that run with an RCA cord, but it also has a second machine output. And this machine output takes and runs all Cheyenne cords and machines and any other machine that uses that same cord. So the pink power box has two machine outputs, one for RCA and one for Cheyenne and any machine that takes that same cord. So that is gonna be really fantastic for all you uh, artists out there that use the Cheyenne. Now you can use the Muso Tuco as well, or maybe you use the Zion and the Cheyenne or the Rook the Cheyenne, the Rook the Cheyenne. Um, you know, a lot of us have a lot of different machines. So now we have a power box that takes both types of machines. So that was really cool and this is your foot pedal output. Now, it is, the outputs are marked. Let me bring this up closer. They are marked, and you can see right there um, that they're marked. So machine, foot pedal, all marked. They don't stand out quite as uh, well as, the, um, as this one because it's you know white on black, and this power box is you know a super cool pink and they did the writing in white so in person you can see it well enough but you know maybe my suggestion would have been to done this lettering in black so it really stood out but that's okay you can still s see it well enough all right okay so now let's talk about the internal features of the power box. So the pink one has this really beautiful gold button and they did this for uh, PMU. You know, they wanted to make it, you know, more girly and more PMU. So, you know, they made it pink and they put the gold knob and they added that extra machine input for the Cheyenne machine. So let's go to the gold knob. Uh, or before we get that, let's mention that it has auto shut off. So if you walk away from the power box, it will automatically shut off in one hour. There is no on and off switch, okay? So in one hour, the machine will automatically shut off. And to turn it back on, you just click the button or the black, the gold knob or the black button, doesn't matter, 
Okay, so the gold knob, really pretty gold knob, and the gold knob manually turns the speed of your machine up and down, right? Easy. The other functions of the gold knob are, let's click the knob. You click the knob and you can see it brings up this menu. There's three different things in the menu, timer, nitro, and exit. So before I go on, let's talk about, you can see that there's a flutter, like the display, uh, the LED lights are fluttering and blinking. And that is only happening, um, you start with um, the numbers right there, right? So that is only happening because it's LED lighting and it's the way the cameras pick up that lighting. It does not do that in person, so don't worry. If it did, that would be really annoying and I would not like this machine, it would give me a headache. But it is a solid, beautiful LED light, lighted display in person. So again, it does not flutter and flicker like that, so don't worry. So here's the timer. So uh, again, let's get out of that. So um, click the knob, gold knob, and you're into the menu and you have three choices, timer, nitro, and exit. So we're on timer, it's highlighted. Let's click the knob again, and you are into the timer. So to move around the timer, just turn the gold knob left or right. If you turn it here on the arrow, click it again, you will start the timer, okay? And if you wanna shut it off, turn it again and click it again. Go back in and you can clear it right here, okay? So very easy. So click the, whoop, click the gold knob to get into the menu. Click the gold knob again and you're into the timer. And some people like the timer, you know, to maybe time their procedures. I know body tattoo artists probably use it more than PMU artists, okay? Click back out and you're back to manual uh, function. Click the gold knob again. Now let's go down to the nitro section. What is nitro? Nitro is like this burst of power that will start your machine no matter how low you are running it. Okay, so let's, let's check that out. So we're on nitro. Click the gold knob again and you get into the nitro setting. Turn the gold knob to yes and click it again. And now nitro is set. So let's go check that out. Let's turn down the machine speed down to 5.0, which is a popular speed in PMU. Let's turn on the machine. And it turned on no problem. Now I'm gonna bring the machine up to my mic so you can hear what it sounds like. When I turn it on, you're gonna hear the machine sound louder and faster, and then it's gonna uh, quiet and slow down to the 5.0 speed. Okay, here we go. Did you hear that? It was like this burst of power. It was a little faster, a little louder, and then it slowed down to the 5.0 speed. Let's do it again. Did you hear that? One more time. There you go, and now it's running at 5.0. Okay, so let's really test out this feature. Let's move that that way. Let's go down to 4.0. I have never run that low, but maybe there's somebody in it that does. But let's try it. Okay, here we go. Yes, it started. I can't believe it. All right, let's try that again. I'll show you. There you go. And you can see that needle is running in and out, right? And when I start it, you'll hear it get, you know, it starts out loud and faster and then it settles down. There you go. So what's really cool about this and what some of you are gonna really like, I know a lot of you, you know, do single needle whip shading and you really like to get those pix pixels and you've gotta move the machine fast, but run it low. And so no matter how low you run it with this Muso Toku, it will start your machine. How annoying is it with some power boxes that they won't start the machine if you, if you have it set too low, you know? Uh, and that won't happen with the Muso Toku. So super low. I don't know how low you can go and it will still start. Oh my gosh, I did not expect that. Okay, it, it did. I mean, 
I don't see any reason we would ever run at 3.0, but it started it. I'll put it up to my mic. Can you hear that? It's it, Once the nitro calmed down, it's like, put, put, put. <laughs> and let's turn it up. Get it back up there. All right. So there you go. I mean, what a cool feature. And some of you are really, really, really going to use that feature. It's going to come in handy. So to get out of nitro, just click the gold knob again. Go down to nitro. Click it again. Turn the knob over to no and click it again. And now you are out of nitro. So let's just run through those features one more time. Click the gold knob and it brings up three features. Timer, turn the gold knob, you're down into nitro, and then you can exit at any time by clicking the gold knob. So click the gold knob, click again and you're into timer. Click again and you're out of timer. Click the gold knob, let's go down to nitro, click it, go over to yes, click yes, now you've activated nitro. Click the gold knob, go down to nitro, click it again, and let's go to no and deactivate Nitro. So that, those are the features of the gold knob, okay? So super cool. Now let's talk about the gold features of this little black button right here. So where you can manually turn the speed up and down with the gold knob, this is for your presets. And with the Musotoku, you can preset four different speeds. And I love that because no, depending on if I'm doing circles or whip shading, pointillism, what I'm trying to do, I have to change my speed during my procedure. And I know a lot of you do as well. So having presets are really super handy and convenient. So I already have uh, this, I've been using this for quite a while now. So I already have my preset set. So let's go into my first preset. Six, well, that's my second preset at 6.0. My third one is 7.0. And my fourth one is 8.0. Okay, so my first preset is 5.8, second 6.0, seven, my third one is 7.0, and my fourth one is 8.0. So let's change those, okay? So that is my fourth preset and I put it at 8.0 for a reason. I never run that high, but let's, so let's change that. Let's change that to 7.5. So the way to change it, what you're going to love about these boxes is it has, um, auto record memory presets. So it's very, it's very fancy and it's very easy. So to change the preset, all you do is take the gold knob, and manually turn it down to 7.5 and wait. And there you go. Did you see that flash? It, a little flash and it says REC. And that means record. It automatically recorded that. So remember, this is my fourth preset and it was at 8.0. So let's go check and see if it's stuck. There's my first one at 5.8, my second one at 6.0, my third one at 7.0, and there's that 7.5 that we just changed. So let's go do another one. Let's change 5.8 to 5.5. So again, take the gold knob, turn it down to 5.5, wait, boom. Did you see that flash? That little flash recorded. So now it is set at 5.5. It's as easy as that. Let's go check and see if it's stuck. That's my second preset. And you can see right here, it has a little number down here on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it that says uh, second. Here's my third preset at 7.0. There's my fourth preset at 7.5. And there's my new 5.5 that I just set. All right, that's my second preset. That's my third, that's my fourth. So let's change this back to 8.0. Again, just turn it up to eight pause, boom, did you see it? It flashed right on the screen, recorded and set. And then you can just easily scroll through all your presets and set them for uh, all your favorite 
uh, speeds. It's super, super easy. Let's go do that one more time. Let's set this back to 7.5. Turn it back to 7.5. Wait a minute. Right there. Recorded. Now it's recorded and set. And if we scroll through, there it is. It's back at 7.5. So cool. I've never seen a power box like that. And it's so easy. I absolutely love that feature. And I think you guys will too. And if you forget, um, you don't have to, you know, get back on this video and try to find this spot in the video. It comes with a manual, uh, easy to read, easy to follow instructions showing you just how to do that super easy. So that is not the only function of the black button here. The other function is it's the continuous uh, on and off button. So you can click the button and you see continuous on showed up and now your machine is on. My foot is not on the foot pedal, okay? So I'm not using the foot pedal at all. I'm turning my machine on with the black button. So technically, you don't need a foot pedal with the Muso Toku. You want to shut your machine off? Long click. Okay, short little clicks scroll through your preset speeds. The long click is your continuous on button. So now the machine is on. Let's do a long click and shut it off. Now it's off. Okay, so like I said, technically, this machine does not need a foot pedal, but I'd like to take a second and um, talk about that. Uh, even though this power box doesn't require a foot pedal, as you saw, you can turn the machine on and off with the click of that black button, but I don't think that's a good habit to get into. I think we are much better off using the foot pedal and not touching the power box um, if we don't have to. Now, I know we're gonna touch it, you know, here and there, maybe to change the speed, but if you're using that button to turn your machine on and off, that's just that many more times that you're having to touch your power box. And I think the less times we have to touch our power box with our contaminated hands, the better. And I know that we bury a wrap it, we bag it, and we protect it really well, but still we're touching the surface of the power box with contaminated hands. And that just always, you know, bothered me a little bit. Um, so I've always been a big believer. We should just spend an extra 40 or 50 bucks, get a foot pedal and turn the machine on and off with the foot pedal. And that eliminates touching the machine and it keeps it to a minimum. Okay. Um, it's not wrong to turn your power box on with your hand, as long as your machine is wrapped and protected, it's not wrong. I just think it's a little better uh, choice to not do that and to use the foot pedal, okay? And that's just uh, my two cents on that, and that's all I got to say about it. Okay, let's go back to uh, the tutorial. So again, turn it on, machine's running, my foot is not on the foot pedal. Turn it off and the machine shuts off. Okay, so now let's run it with the foot pedal. Okay, I'm on the foot pedal and my machine's running. Lift off, machine stops. And I like that, touch and go, touch and go, right? Touch, it runs, lift off, it stops. And if I lift my foot off, it does not run. My foot has to be on the foot pedal for it to run. So I'm lifting on and off the foot pedal. And I really like that. That's how I prefer to work. But I've got a lot of good colleagues that prefer to work the other way. Long click on that black uh, button and you're in continuous run mode. And what that means is this machine is running without my foot being on the foot pedal. To stop it, I have to touch the foot pedal. Okay? Now I've touched the foot pedal again and turned the machine back on and my foot is not on the machine. So your machine will run without your foot on the pedal. 
And again, if you want to shut it off, just click it and shut it off. And a lot of people love to work that way. Click it on, it's running, and your foot does not need to be on the foot pedal at all. Or click it and click it off and the machine shuts off. Or turn continuous mode off and you have to lift and press, lift and press, lift and press to run the machine. And that's my preferred way of working. And one is not right or wrong. One is not better than the other. That is strictly personal preference. But I, I, I am uh, a believer in using a foot pedal rather than getting in the habit of touching um, the power box to turn it on and off, okay? And like I said, I know during a procedure, we might click a speed here and there, but that's not nearly as often as you're gonna be clicking that um, on and off button. And I just think, you know, what if you wore a little hole uh, in your barrier wrap or it tore a little bit because of how often you're touching it and that just makes me a little concerned. So for that reason I do prefer a foot pedal to run your machine and with a foot pedal you have the option of continuous on or continuous off. All right so that pretty much wraps up all the features of the power boxes. Um, and all the features are the exact same except for the um, outputs that we uh, talked about earlier, okay? All right, so let's wrap this up talking about how do we barrier wrap the Musotoku power box. So, this is another feature of the power box that I like, or a little added little something something that they did. And what they did was they created these little plastic coverings and they fit right over the power boxes, both of them. They snap down to really snug in and then you just lift it right up. And of course it fits right over uh, the pink one and it snaps down as well. And it really covers the back, the sides, has a little, um, covers the sides up to here. And then of course it has the opening for um, your cords uh, to insert. And you just take it off and snap it back off. So I think that is just groovy as heck. I love it. And I've never seen a power box that came with its own custom fitted, uh, uh, plastic uh, covering, plastic cover, never seen it. So now you're probably thinking, okay, that covers the box just fine, but the knob <laughs> is still exposed. So how do we cover that? Well, they thought of that too. So the plastic cover is on the black Musotuko and they include this little cover. I mean, how cool is that? So the little cover fits right on there nicely and turns, turns the uh, speed up and down, which I can show you right now. That just turned on and there we go, <laughs> right? So you can see it's got the, the little uh, plastic knob, fits right over the knob and it turns your speed. Uh, oh, we're in, let's exit, turns your speed back and forth really nicely and it is completely protected with nice thick plastic. Okay, and when you order the black or the pink, I think you get three of these with the plastic knob included uh, just to try them out and to sample. But there's one little caveat. So, when they made the pink power box, you know, they wanted to put a couple extra features and make it a little feminine for us PMURs, so they gave it a gold knob. The gold knob is bigger than the black knob, so when you try to take the plastic cap over it, it doesn't fit, it just doesn't fit. So, a good solution that works fantastic is size 14 ink caps, right? That size 14 ink cap. Everybody knows how inexpensive ink caps are and we have these on the Girls Ink store. So, plastic cover goes right over the box 
and the size 14 ink cap goes right over the gold knob perfectly. Let's turn it on. And you can see that it works. It changes up and down. Really fantastic. Of course, this button works, right? Nothing is negatively affected by the plastic covering. And you can see that ink cap fits over there. Really nice. And it turns the speed up and down perfectly. So again, one way to protect your power boxes is to purchase these custom fitted uh, tray covers. And you get the little cap. With the pink one, you're going to have to purchase size 14 ink caps, which we have on the store. They come in, you, you get like three, I think three uh, covers and caps to try out when you purchase uh, either one of the power boxes. And if you like that setup, then you can order the tray covers, uh, I mean the, the box covers and the knob covers uh, separately. You get 20 per, 20 per box and they are $22. So a dollar and some change per um, cover. All right, and some of you are gonna love that. I thought it was really cool and a lot of my PMU friends thought it was fantastic. But I also know not everybody's gonna like that. You're gonna think it's a pain in the butt you, and you, know, you don't wanna spend the extra $20 on you know, one of these things or you think it's gonna be a pain in the butt uh, to order the extra ink caps, one more thing in your cut, you know, if you go with the pink. So uh, a really super simple solution that works for both power boxes is a sandwich bag. Simple. <laughs> Don't make fun of me now because I'm bringing out the Glad sandwich bag, but I knew not everybody was going to like the plastic cover. Um, so I had to come up with an easy way to protect your boxes and really affordable. And I was sourcing out uh, all different kinds of bags, uh, you know, to carry on the store. And some of them were expensive or they didn't fit great. And then finally I'm like, well, let me try a Glad sandwich bag. And it worked, it worked fantastic, you guys. I mean, you just slip it in like that and it works fantastic. I mean, if you end up having a little stand, it's still gonna work. Perfect, right? And covers it really nicely, no issues. And the Glad, you know, bags, they're made really rugged. They're actually thicker and more durable than a lot of, you know, the machine bags and um, barrier uh, wraps that we get, uh, you know, on, on in some of these PMU sites. So I like that. And you can see it fits right over the machine one, to, the pink one too, even with all the cords plugged in. Bring it all the way back, and it fits right in. Perfect. And I mean, if you're really anal and you wanna snap it down, you know, on the sides and really secure it in, I mean, you can do that. And you can see it covers, you know, about three inches of your cord. And it's almost like, it's almost like the Glad sandwich bag was just made for the Musotoku power box. And it's clear. So if you're somebody that likes to take pictures, you know, for Instagram of your tray setup, you're still, even with the bag on it, going to see how super beautiful, cool and unique this power box is. So whether you go with the sandwich bag or you go with the tray, plastic tray cover, um, it does not hide how beautiful and uh, unique and cool looking these power boxes are. And I know a lot of you like taking pictures of your tray setup and posting them all over social media, and so do I. So uh, there you have it. Um, great way to protect your machine. Okay, so let's talk about pricing. Now these are a little bit more expensive uh, maybe than you're used to for power boxes, and that's just because of the high quality and uh, the way that they are built. As of yet, we have not had any complaints about the pricing. 
but the black one retails for $400 and the pink one retails for $470. And it's, it's not $70 more because it's pink and has a gold knob. I, the gold knob maybe was a little bit more expensive for them to add on, but what you're really paying for is that second machine output that runs Cheyenne. It cost them more to manufacture uh, the pink box with that uh, second machine output and that reflects in um, the higher price of 470. So 400 and 470 for the pink one. And there you have it. There is that is the uh, Musotoko uh, power boxes. And, um, you know, one thing I will, uh, one thing I'll, I'll tell you, I've talked to a lot of body tattooers that have had this for a long time. I talked in depth to Chris Sanford about it. And one thing that I'm learning is you can run these things, run them and run them and run them and run them. And they don't overheat and they are high performance power boxes. And like I said, they are highly, highly filtered, which um, runs your machine smooth, really super smooth. So the Muso Toku, Muso Toku power box in black, and of course the pink, if you like pink. And uh, I know that uh, here at Girls Inc, we were the first ones to get them. Uh, the pink one is uh, fairly, fairly new. And I think I'm pretty sure we're the only ones in the U S to, uh, get them quickly. And they are available now, both the black and the pink on the girls Inc store. And I will post that link below so you can go find it, uh, super quick and easy. If you have any questions about the power box or anything at all, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, below. You can drop your comments or questions below, or you can email us here at Girls Inc. at info at info at Girls Inc. com. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Girls Inc. Studio and my personal Instagram at Tat Girls Inc. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time.